Hello, everybody, and welcome back to more of the 2005 Hypatia Contest. That's the Grade 11 Written Contest. We're on question number two. Gwen and Chris are playing a game. They begin with a pile of toothpicks and use the following rules. The two players alternate turns. On any turn, the player can remove one, two, three, four, or five toothpicks from the pile. The same number of toothpicks cannot be removed on two different turns. The last person who is able to play, er, yeah, who is able to play wins, regardless of whether there are any toothpicks remaining in the pile. So I guess it's possible to leave a certain amount because they wouldn't be able to pick them up because maybe there's one left in the pile and they've already picked one. For example, if the game begins with eight toothpicks, the following moves could occur. Gwen removes one toothpick, leaving seven in the pile. Chris removes four toothpicks, leaving three in the pile. Gwen removes two toothpicks, leaving one in the pile. Gwen is now the winner, since Chris cannot remove one toothpick. Gwen already removed one toothpick on one of her turns. And the third rule says that one toothpick cannot be removed on another turn. Okay. So, 8, 7, 3, 1. I'm noticing these are uh, powers of 2 minus 1. Don't know if that's relevant, but just little observations like that. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's not a whole lot I can say about the game right away. Knowing that certain moves are removed once they're played puts me in mind of maybe pairing up um, the, the number of ways you can make certain amounts with these toothpicks. For example, I noticed that uh, 1 and 5 are a way to make 6, 2 and 4 are a way to make 6. And um, I find a lot of times when they, uh, on, on, on the Friar Yawa Hypatia questions, when there is a game theory question involving you know, removing certain amounts or adding certain amounts or placing this number in this box and this number in this box, that sort of stuff, to get sums and differences. Uh, a lot of times that boils down to what numbers, what, what pairs of numbers, what triples of numbers can add up to this amount and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm, what I'm thinking of here. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but I think the number three, because it doesn't have a pair to add up to six, might be very important. But that's just First reactions, let's actually get into the question. Suppose the game begins with 11 toothpicks. Gwen removes by, uh, begins by removing 3. Chris removes then 1. Then Gwen removes 4. Explain how Chris can win the game. Okay, well, let's actually see what's been going on. So we start with 11, and then uh, Gwen removed... Three, right? Three, then Chris removes one. Um, let's make it total. So we had eleven, and then we're down to eight. Uh, Chris removes one, then Gwen removed four. So Chris removing one gets a seven. Seven down to okay, so we have three. So it's Chris's turn to play. Three, one, four. Okay. So it's Chris's turn to play. So he's left with two, three toothpicks on his turn. Now he can't take all three because three was already played. So that avenue is uh, for attack is out. Uh, we might also want to the three is taken, the one is taken, and the four is taken. So he has two and five. He 
he can actually take. Those are his moves. But clearly he can't take. Five. There's not five toothpicks left to take. There's not five or more toothpicks, I guess. Chris must take two. Leaving Gwen, Gwen with one toothpick. But since Chris took one, earlier it is impossible for Gwen to play. And if it's impossible for Gwen to, Gwen to play, Chris was the last one who was able to play. Chris wins. Okay. So that sort of eases us, in, eases us into the game very quick. I, I've mentioned this before on, on written contest, but usually when they introduce a game or a concept, or heck, even in the last question, uh, question number one, they, they, you know, they introduce a new operation. They tend to make... Question A, the very simple, did you understand the definition of our game, of our operation, of our brand new function? And so even if it's question four on the Hypatia or question 10 on the Euclid, if you've got the time, take a look at it and, and see, do I understand the definition of the sequence they're making? Because then quite often A is to find the seventh term in the sequence. Or this one, very simple. Did we understand how the how the taking the toothpicks affected the total pile amount? Did we understand the rule of you can't pick two if two has already been picked? That sort of thing. So A, very simple in almost all cases on a written contest. Uh, not so much on the earlier Euclid questions, but even then, A is, is always easiest, I find. And A, A can usually just be a reading comprehension. Did you understand the game? It's B and C where we're going to have to develop a little more theory, most likely. Okay, so B. Suppose the game begins with 10 toothpicks. Gwen begins by removing 5 toothpicks. Explain why Gwen can always win regardless of, Chris, oh, regardless of what Chris removes on his turn. So it starts with 5 toothpicks. Gwen removes 5. So uh, let's, let's take a look at that. I'll give myself another piece of paper. So once again, up in the corner, I'm going to have what we've got going on. So we start with 10, then Gwen removes 5. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the 5 is taken. So Gwen removes 5, leaving 5 in the pile. So Chris is left with five toothpicks. He can't remove all five. As Gwen removed five earlier. He can, however, remove... One, two, three, or four toothpicks. And this leaves uh, five minus one is four, three, two, one toothpicks. For Gwen. Okay, but if Chris removes two toothpicks, yeah, Gwen can't remove two, but she's staring at three. <clears throat> so we might say something instead like, Chris removes X toothpicks. Leaving five minus X for Gwen. This way I've covered all the cases. Okay. 
So if Gwen can just remove, now it's clear to us that if Chris takes two, Gwen can take the three, because three won't be crossed off our list. But if Gwen can take five minus X toothpicks, She wins. So 5 minus x is not equal to 5. And 5 minus x is not equal to x. Otherwise, x would be equal to 5 over 2. So 5 minus x, since it's not 5, which Gwen took, and it's not x, which Chris just took, It's still in the list of usable moves. And so Gwen can always win. Nice. So very simple, we, but we had to do a little bit more. So for question A, or for part A, we were forced. Chris had to take two, because he couldn't take five, and the two was then the only option left to him. And it was just sort of, do I understand that, yep, Chris has to take two, and then can I realize Gwen is left with one? But this one was a little more general. We didn't know what move Chris would take, but based on the possibilities, and you could have just done some casework. You could have said, here's Gwen's strategy. If Chris takes one, she takes four. If Chris takes two, she takes three. That's, that's a fine way to describe this one. But we were a bit more general because we Chris had multiple moves to make, and then Gwen had multiple responses left in her arsenal. We had to find the way that makes her win. Okay. So a bit more involved for B, and I imagine C will be a bit more involved still. So C. Suppose the game begins with nine toothpicks. Gwen begins by removing two toothpicks. Explain how Gwen can always win regardless of how Chris plays. So now in, in B part, whatever Chris did, Gwen could immediately react and win. I get Usually for a back and forth game, when it comes to C part or even D part, assuming there is a D part, uh, what I have found is, you'll, you know, they, they open, Gwen has two toothpicks. I imagine for a lot of Chris's moves, Gwen has an immediate I can win response, but there's probably one or two things that Chris can do and then we have to say, well, that limits Gwen's options. She has to take another very specific turn. And then after that, whatever Chris does, Gwen can win. Uh, that's usually the strategy I find. So uh, if, I, if I find that it's quite simple and it's just whatever Gwen can, or Chris can do, now Gwen immediately reacts and wins that, that was a B part. So I expect a little more from my C part. Okay. So C. So she. Uh, we start with... start with nine. Gwen removes two and that leaves seven. And we have our big board here of operations. Number of toothpicks we can remove. And two is out. <coughs> okay. So Chris has seven toothpicks before him. You can remove one, three, four, or five, leaving six, four, three, two, respectively. So this is what Gwen will be faced. If Chris gives a 1, Gwen will be faced with a 6, that sort of thing. Now, we can see that if Chris removes the 3, Gwen will immediately remove the 4. 4 will still be on her list. Same with if Chris removes the 4, Gwen will remove a 3. So you see what I'm saying? There are some instant reactions that Gwen can give. But if Chris leaves, for example, 6, there's no take 6 toothpicks operation. 
That's not a turn she can take. So what is she left to do? Same thing, if Chris leaves two, she would, I mean, two is ordinarily a move she could do, but she already took two, and we can't have the same move twice. So then she's stuck. So let's focus on the two case just for a moment. So, uh, if Gwen is left with just two, well, she can't remove three or four or five. One, Chris already did five, but three or four are too big. So she must remove one, leaving Chris with one that he can't pick up. Okay. If Gwen is left with three, she takes three. If Gwen is left with four, she takes all four. Okay. Uh, finally, if Gwen is left with six, she has moves. So if Gwen was left with six, Chris took one. So she could take, she has three, four, or five left. And if she gives a three, well, Chris will be left with a three, and he can't take three, and he can't take two, and he can't take one, because he already took one. So she'd win there. Um, so that's not a bad strategy. If she took four, Chris would be left with two, and he can't take two, and he can't take one, so he'd still win. And if she removed five, uh, he'd be left with one, and he can't take one, because to get six, he took one. So actually, any of these moves would do. You just pick one of them. So she can take any. I'm not going to include that she can take any and she'll still win. I'm going to say she should remove... Uh, the easiest one to talk about would be five. Leaving Chris with one. That he cannot pick up. Okay. And that's, those are all the cases. Chris removes one. We could even make a little chart if we so desire. Uh, we can sort of have our turns here. Um, what's left? So we have uh, we have start. Then we have Gwen's turn. So. Um, Oh, and uh, what's in the pile? So we start with nine, and one, two, three, four, five are left. Then Gwen takes two, so one, three, four, five are left, and that leaves seven. And then uh, Chris has some options. So maybe a chart like this isn't the easiest thing to do. We'll make maybe we can make a different chart. So Chris takes one, three, four, or five, leaving six, four, three, or two. Gwen's choices here are uh, three, four, five. Uh, one, four, five, one, three, five, 
and one, three, four. When picks, I'll say she picks the five here, the four here, the three here, and the one here. Leaving one, one, zero, zero. And Chris's choices here are, well, the five's been taken, so he's got three, four. The four is taken, so he's got one, five. Uh, one, five again. And three, four. So these two columns tell us Chris can't play. If Chris can't play, then Gwen wins. Okay, so this would be a nice little chart summarizing uh, Gwen's strategies and showing that we understand how the choices are being affected, like the, the number of possible moves they can make is being affected as we go. This would be fine, uh, I think, with a little explanation. Uh, all these sentences out here are good, too. Uh, so really, that's sort of two ways you could demonstrate your answer for C. So that, that does it for C. I think that was a nice little game. Uh, I expected a little bit more from uh, the C part there, but that's question two. Uh, and we've got question three coming up in the next video, which only has two parts. We'll take a look at that in the next video. But thank you guys, as always, for watching. If you want to, feel free to like the video. But either way, I'll see you for question three next time.